Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, comfort killers. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name, and I'm sitting here with a very organized, look at his books in the back, man. This is Tyler Chef of CashflowGuys.com, and it is a pleasure to have him here with me today. Tyler, thank you so much for joining the Comfort Killers. Stacey, glad to be here. And you hear his voice. It's not because he didn't get up. He'd been up, okay? He'd been up since 4 a.m. doing his thing. It's voice. He got a radio magnetic voice, and I just want to make sure our comfort killers understand that. Don't mean to scare any of you if you haven't <laughs> got off the couch yet. Maybe now's the well, time. Tyler, tell, tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, uh, to our comfort killers audience. We want to get to hear it from you. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm going to jump right in. You know, I spent many years thinking that my charm would get me places, that I didn't have to do the work. You see, that I could just be that charming young man at 17 years old, and that would work out great. Then I showed up at uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama. I met my first, my first drill sergeant. Mm. And that very tall, very large man re-educated me on the, on the facts of life, that it's going to take a little more than charm and my BS to get me where I needed to go, that I needed to back it up with some action and some mm. facts. So that was game changer number one. Yeah. So you thought that you could just walk, walk through life with a smile and that crazy, awesome, handsome voice of yours, man. See, that's it. What else did I need, right? I didn't have to do any work. Well, you know, well, I think so, too. That's why I've been trying to perfect my smile. I wasn't smiling a lot, but I realized that action is key, and I'm glad you touched on that point because you actually, so you, you, you were in the Army, right? The right. Army? U.S. Okay. Army. Thank you so much for your service, sir. I'm glad that you have helped me maintain my freedom in this country. So thank you first. I appreciate that. So cash flow, guys. Of course, that takes a lot of action, but I'm sure you didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what, it's going to be the cash flow, guys. You failed a bunch, and learning from what you said when you realized that you had to take 100% responsibility for both your success and failures, and more, more on your failure side of it, and that's what I want to talk about. You took a lot of failures. What kind of things were you doing in your life growing up before CashflowGuys.com? Well, let's see. I was, uh, I was a real estate agent. I'm still a real estate agent, actually. Uh, used to buy and flip houses. Now I buy and keep apartment buildings. Big difference there. Yeah. Um, I used to think that the world owed me something. Mm. I used to have that belief for many, many years. I like that goes right along what I was saying. I thought I could smile pretty and say something sweet and people would just roll over and give me whatever I want. I used yeah. to think that if I had a good story, the IRS didn't really care whether or not I paid my taxes. <laughs> they got an education to the contrary. Yeah. So, so let me just dive in because you found Grant Cardone, right? And Grant Cardone oh. wakes, we, he wakes us all up. He puts us in a whole different consciousness. Before that, you were the jack of all trades, real estate agent. You were dipping and diving in a few things. Um, why, why did you learn or how did you learn that you needed to stick with a specific thing in order to kind of move forward in life? Why? Because why? I was the jack of all trades. I thought that was the thing to do. Because the jack of all trades is a lie. Mm. It's a lie because you're never going to achieve expertise as the jack of all trades. Now, I didn't realize that for many, many years. <clears throat> but I also, when I dug down and got my why, and it sounds hokey and everybody says that, get your why, get your why, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottom line is, it, it's fact. I had to have a good reason why I was unhappy. I had to discover why. And it wasn't just because who got elected president or or what's going on in the world or whatever. None of that mattered. What mattered is that I wasn't happy where I was. I needed to figure out why. And more importantly, I needed to take responsibility for why I wasn't happy. Mm. That's the piece I was missing. I was not taking responsibility. I bitched about the government taxing me because I worked for the government. I had a six figure paycheck and I was crying about how much, how much I paid in taxes, but I wasn't willing to take the action to do anything about it. And you, you talk about one day, you know, waking up, that's pretty much it. I got tired of giving the government my money. Mm. So I researched, how can I legally, because we know that my sweet charm isn't going to work with the IRS. How can I legally reduce my tax obligation? And it came down to real estate. Mm. So you kind of figured out now you take responsibility. You're in the stage of owning, owning what you're going, what you're going through in life and you're finding the solutions through different avenues. So that is that why you became a real estate agent? Is that 
It is. I, real estate, I became a real estate agent to make money. That was my original idea. And then I realized that real estate agents really work for tips. The real money is in the investing. See, I didn't need to be a real estate agent to make a living. What I needed to do was to buy cash flowing assets. What I found is there's a lot of BS out there in the world that real estate education in some cases is more profitable than the real estate is, mm. which didn't make sense to me. So I opened cash flow guys to kind of tweak that a little bit, to, to do, send a message that 90% of get, making money in real estate investing is getting off your lazy ass and get off the couch and get to work. That's what it really is. There is no get rich quick. No mm. one's going to hand it to you and you don't need money and you don't need credit. You don't need any of that garbage that society tells us that we need. We don't need a college degree to make our money in real estate. And we don't need to spend $50,000 to have some joker stand on stage and tell us how to buy a $50,000 house. It doesn't work that way. I love that. I love, I love that you put it in terms like that. It takes hard work, some sweat equity, some determination, getting up off your ass and definitely some action. So now one thing that makes you comfort killer and you're getting uncomfortable right now is the fact that you learn how to acquire multi, a multifamily real estate using none of your own money and credit. My comfort killers are here asking why. They're knocking the door down. They want to know why, Tyler. How could you do that is the question that they're asking. What I realized is I spent too much time thinking I knew the answers and not enough time knowing that I didn't. Instead, I picked up the phone and I talked to people. I would go out to networking events and talk to people and say, you know what? I want to buy an apartment building. Here's the problem. I have no idea how to buy an apartment building. I went on Grant Cardone TV, watched his, his uh, afternoon show and learned how to, to break down my first deal. That was a couple years ago. Then I just went out in public and started talking to people saying, look, I want to buy some, some apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. Problem is I happen to be $999,000 short of the $1 million that I need to buy that apartment building. So if I have the team, how about you guys bring the money? Let's go do this deal. And a few people looked at me like I was an idiot. And then somebody knocked on my door with a check in their hand. Mm. And that's how it all got rolling. So what you're saying to me sounds very familiar because of course, if you don't have the current, I always say, man, listen, there's other forms of currency in this world, man. It's not just dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Is how much time are you going to put into this deal? How much effort? What's your attitude like? Are you willing to freaking go on, climb up that hill? Because then you're going to attract someone with that other resource that you don't have. Is that what, is that how this thing happened for you? That is absolutely correct. It's figuring out what you don't have and then simply reaching out to find it. There's a lot of things that I don't have to put deals together, but I know that I can pick up the phone, make a few phone calls, work my network to put those things together. I don't know the answer to every question. Every time I write an offer for a piece of real estate, I don't have that kind of money sitting in my checking account yet. So you're, you're freaking, you see, you, you're ahead, you're, you're in the future, bro. I call, I'm going to call you an innovator. You don't even have the damn funds in there. You shouldn't no. be doing the deal. Society says, why are you making that call, right? Conventional exactly. wisdom will say, don't even go close to that deal. And traditional thinking says, you're not good enough, Tyler. So exactly. you broke through that by actually picking up the phone and making the damn call. And, put, exactly. and starting putting things in motion. So where does cash flow guys come into? I know you started a podcast, amazing yes. podcast, by the way, in 2015. So where did this come from? Were you already an expert? Because two years ago, that was your first deal. Did you start it after the first deal while you were doing the first deal? Tell me about that. I started it kind of in the middle. I have never, and to this day, I don't have all the answers to everything there is to know about investing in apartment buildings, but that's fine. I don't need to know all the answers. I started the podcast to send a message to other people that, look, man, you don't have to know how to buy an apartment building today. That doesn't mean you're not going to have one in six months. Wow. I wanted to get the message out, the message that I'm sending right now, that message to say, it all starts with getting, standing the hell up and go talk to somebody. Stand up, talk to people, let people know what you want to do. Everybody told me, including my own family, oh, you're going to fail. Nobody's going to loan you money. Nobody's going to invest in your deals. The, the sellers are going to say no. They're not going to let you take payments, uh, get, make you, let you make payments for equity. None of that stuff is ever going to work. That's what gurus teach. Nobody's going to listen to you. Hmm. So it sounds like, you know, when you, when you realize that you don't have all the answers, when you know that, when you take 100% uh, responsibility for now your further actions in business and life that makes you an expert 
Now you, now you, now you kind of go to the other side of, you know what? I know I don't know. And what I'm going to do is find out the answers. And through that finding process, through that journey, you become the expert in that space. Yep, absolutely. When you get to that point to where you have that unconscious competence where I don't have to think about it anymore, I just know that if I have a question about raising money for one of my deals, I pick up the phone, I call Cliff Hunt, that's one of my attorneys, he answers the question, it's that simple. Mm. Okay, so now I can move on to the next step. The next step is I need to get out a sheet of paper. Mm. I may need to flip it over to the second page and I need to write, I want to buy 123 Anywhere Street. Mm -hmm. And I can do that in the next six months. But here's what I need to do that. I don't know anything about your building, Mr. Mr. Building owner, or Miss building owner. I need to know the income and the expenses. You know why? Because I just watched Grant Cardone TV and that's what he said to do. And that's literally how I did my first deal. How I broke it down was sitting down, watching some YouTube videos, figuring out the information I need and then asking for it. Mm. Here's the thing. Half the people hung up the phone, wouldn't give it to me. I let that bother me. And then I decided those people are apparently not ready for my money. Someone's mm -hmm. getting my money. It depends. Is it you today, Stacy, or is it somebody else going to get my money? Mm -hmm. so, so you go in there with that mindset. Like, even if you don't, if you hang up the phone on me, you got a problem. You're the one with the problem. Oh, yeah. don't want my, you don't want my money. You're, you're putting your objections down on me. I'm asking you for viable information. Need the income, need the expenses need to know what I'm looking at here. You go in there with confidence then. Absolutely. How long did it take you to build that confidence up coming from a place where you didn't know to now you know? Let's see, I'm 46 years old, so I'm gonna go ahead and say 42 years. <laughs> I love it, I love it, man. 42 years, no confidence, came up, said, I mean, you know what, I'm gonna pick up the phone. Through the interactions, through getting hung up on, through the no's, you're saying that you developed that confidence. Now you can call anywhere on one, two, three, anywhere street. Here's, here's the, the, the breaking moment that I got to put out there. It was about two years ago, up until about two years ago, I was afraid of what people would think about me. I was afraid, you talk about comfort killers. I was afraid that, that if I didn't have the right answer, that somebody said no, that I was going to look like an idiot. I have a hater. I have a guy online that's trashed me for nine years. Social, yeah. Sociopath. Guy won't go away. He's got nothing better to do. But I read the 10X rule two years ago. And in that book, about halfway through that book, it says, Grant says, if you got haters, if you only got one, you're not working hard enough. If you got one, get you 20. And I remember I was out in my kayak, offshore, fishing. My wife was in her kayak and I went, oh no, it just happened. That was it. That's when I decided that I can turn on the video camera and I can talk about what I do know and admit what I don't. And that if I spend a lot of time admitting what I don't, somebody will pick up the phone and call me or give me the answers that I need. That's when it changed. Yo, you, that was so powerful because I think, you know, as we go through the TEDx rule and I kind of listened to that more than a hundred times, audio book, and it, it actually became me because I was afraid and you're right. We are scared to be ourselves and admit what we do know and what we don't know. You're absolutely right that if someone says, hey, listen, they bash you and they trash you, you automatically retreat and contract. Yes. Automatically. So now you're now, and what I love what you said is, I need more of you because now I know I'm doing something right. If there's more of you out in the field. And that's amazing, man. I want to go through your top three goals that you have right now. One is... Being, being a role model, being a role model to your daughters and to your young nephew by reinforcing the principles of honesty and ethics into your life. Big words that you said here, ethics is a huge word. Now, how do you think that you go about doing that on a daily basis? Every day I wake up, I go do my thing. I don't have to lie, cheat, and steal to make a dollar. I can look you straight in the face and say, we're going to do this deal, and here's why. It's with extreme confidence. It's with a set of balls that says, we need to get this done because this is the best for you and this is the best for me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. They got nothing. Yeah, I, no, I, love, you you know, I love that because that's, that's how I, you know, the Comfort Killer Starter Pack is a huge, huge binder. And I know people need it. And it's the best thing that ha will happen in their life. When you deliver content that helps and changes people's life, when you go into a deal of a symbiotic style of relationship, there's no failure there. We don't have to lie. I don't have to beat around the bush and I don't have to sell you anything because this is what you need. This is what we need together. And I love that approach because that is totally ethical, 
right? When you're, when, and that ties back to your why, uh, Tyler, with you're getting up every day, living your purpose, doing your purpose. And there's no, there's no shame about it, man. And I love that approach. Your second goal is educating the world on financial intelligence to help them achieve generational wealth while helping others at the same time. That's huge, man. How do you go about that every day? Every single day I turn on this microphone, I sit in front of this desk, I get in front of this video camera and I start talking about everything I learned. Right now I'm reading this little book called Compound Interest, right? Mm. I don't know, four bucks on Amazon. Somebody recommended it. I devour the information. I turn around and I regurgitate it out to the world. Why? Because chances are most people are too damn lazy to even look for the book. And if it doesn't come from me, they're not going to believe it. So now I have this audience. They're listening. I'm going to educate them. Because then I won't have to support them later, you see. Yeah. If I educate them now, I don't have to support them later. Yo, yo, comfort killers. I hope you and you're you're on a, a Facebook Live as well. So I got I got some people in the room listening to you. And if guys, if you have any questions, just rock it out right now while we're doing this podcast, while we're doing this video, because this is what it's all about. And I love what you said. You won't have to help them later. You won't have to keep that, that like leeches on your shoulder. You're giving them the information that they need so they could go out there and help others and help themselves and their family. And that's how you create generational wealth. And I love that. Traveling the world while continuing to teach those who fully intend on escaping the rat race and gaining financial freedom. How do you do that on a daily basis? Every single day I look at my wife in the morning and oh. she never got to travel. Mm. She's a beautiful woman that's struck in with MS and, and she gets up in the morning and drives on. And every time I think that I can't, I'm not going to be able to do this or it's going to overcome me. I think about that. I won't be able to take her someplace new next month, the month after we just got back from Puerto Rico in yep. two months, we're going to Belize. We chartered a boat for six days with some friends. She needs to see these things that she, that, that she, was not able to see before. Yeah. Her sister passed away recently, identical twin. She's 46 years old, suddenly wow. died, never got to go anywhere and see anything. We're not going to make that same mistake twice. We're going to live life now. We're going to make our money and live our life now. Yeah. We're not going to have any regrets. Regrets, regrets don't exist. That's not how we roll. You know, that, that's, that's powerful. First of all, rest in peace to her sister and a big shout out to your, to your wife. What's her name? Jill. Jill, big shout out to Jill, uh, because that's exactly what I'm told. My family, uh, we're Jamaicans. We came here for the American dream. We wanted the, the house with the, the single family home with the picket fence. We wanted to go be nurses, go be CNAs. We wanted that. That was the American dream to us. But guess what? Every time they go on vacation, guess where they go? To Jamaica. They right. go back to what they know. They never seen parts of the world. And I said, you know what? I'm going to break that cycle. I want to see Belgium. I want to see places I can't even pronounce. I don't even want to know the language there. That's the difference that I want to make. So you're right. Let's live life now. When people say YOLO, you only live once. No, mother, we die once. I live that's every day. That's right. You're I live every right. day. So I love that. Hey, listen, tell me something, because I know you're big into uh, this multifamily uh this acquiring multifamily real estate. Um, one of your people that you mentioned is Robert, the cash flow quadrant king. And uh, you took some of his teachings, and of, of course, you Grant Cardone, and it's actually working. If someone's interested in doing this right now, if they're on this, they're on the stream, they want to, you know what, I'm going to invest in some multifamily. Give me three resources that they could use right now to get started. I would start number one with Grant Cardone's midday show. And I think it's a uh, real estate inv the investor, yeah, right? The real real estate investor. Investor. That is one of the most comprehensive things that you're ever going to run across that gives it to you straight. And guys, it, he, he, everybody walks away from that. I've talked to people that have watched it. They think it's, it's simple. It makes it look too simple. It's too easy. It's really that easy. Yeah. The difference between you and what he does on the show is that that big binder, he has one. He did the work to put one together. And he goes out and write off, writes offers. That's what he does. That's how he gets things done. So just do that. Read, if you haven't already, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Read Cash Flow Quadrant. Get that concept. Listen to podcasts, mine, yours. Get some motivation. And don't let people tell you 
that you're not allowed to buy an apartment building. Somebody told me once that I did not have the experience to own an apartment building. Mm. The response was, what, how much experience do I need? Where is that in the book? And for that matter, where the hell is the book? Because I didn't realize there was a book that said I have to have so much experience before I can buy an apartment building. When I worked for the federal government, they told me to be a chief bosun. I had to have 10 years federal service. I said, that's interesting. In 18 months, they were writing me $100,000 checks as a chief bosun. That's it. That's it. You know, and, and a lot of people, you know, that's how I treat it. You know, as in the resource center, when you work someplace, your place of enjoyment, your place of employment. I love that this, this outside of the bo box, show me where, if you can't show me where it says that, which it doesn't, never does, then I'm going to break through the barrier. I'm going to break through your status quo. I'm going to do things differently because I am me. I'm a different, I'm a different type of individual. So I appreciate that. And that's what I had to do. I broke through a lot. Listen, I'm not supposed to be here, Tyler. You know, they said, who you, you're gay, you're black, and you're a woman. You how what are you doing in this space? I said, <laughs> I'm coming. Show me the book. Cause right. I'm a unicorn, baby. That's right. I love that's it. Right. Give me your favorite quote, man. My favorite quote is you can't be fired from your investments, but you can be fired from your job. Mm. And I coined that one myself. Mm, I love that. I love that you gave your own quote. Say that to us again here. You can be fired from your, from your job, but you can't be fired from your investments. I love it. I freaking love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that. I'm going to quote you. I might, I might hashtag you in that one. I might take it. <laughs> um, tell me more about your podcast. Where can people find you before we move forward? Where can people find you? We are everywhere. I mean, you name it. Stitcher, uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, all over Facebook. If you just go into any podcast player and type in the words cash, everybody wants some cash, flow, everybody wants it flowing, and guys, because it usually takes an army to put together some, some what we do. You can't do this by yourself. So you search cash, flow, guys, you'll get to my podcast. My show is right to the point. We skip all the bullshit. We skip all the fluff. The fluffiest thing about my show is my intro. Why? Because it winds me up before I go on the air and start talking. That's why. I don't care if you like it. I do it for me. It gets me juiced up, ready to roll, and then we talk. I, my show pisses off real estate agents. Yeah. Bankers call me dirty names. I don't care, but I skip right past the bullshit. We get to the stuff that what it takes to get it done. We get it's all about mindset and taking action, and that's what my show's about. And I don't teach flipping. I don't teach house hacking or, or any of the other garbage that results in you paying taxes not my game. I talk, I teach mailbox money every single month, more money coming in every month. That's why I have a drawer full of checks right here to my left. Mailbox money. That's what it's all about. I don't want I like big that. checks. I want lots of little checks. I love that mailbox money. When I was sitting up with Grant Cardone, he showed me freaking, um, what is that? Brinks truck money. Okay. The Brinks truck had to bring it upstairs uh, to him, but that, that, this is what I'm talking about. I love it so much. So early on in your real estate career, you had to learn to negotiate. This is the last part of this thing here. Because negotiating, a lot of people are scared, but they fail to realize we negotiated as kids, natural born negotiator, right? Yep. So tell me, how was it like to, to step outside of amateur negotiationville into an effective negotiator? What sort of things did you have to learn? Was it like a trial and test, trial and failure, failed a bunch? Tell me about your negotiation experience. The minute that I realize that the other party is as terrified to negotiate as I am, we're good. That seller that's got that property, they're scared to death. They are terrified that I'm going to figure out a way to steal their apartment building. But here's the thing, folks. You can't buy something that's not for sale. People aren't going to sell you something they don't want to. They're scared. You're scared. Don't be afraid of no. I go directly for the no, Stacey. The first thing I'm going to have a conversation with you about is something that I know damn well you're going to say no to. Because no is an uncomfortable reaction. And when I get you to say no right out of the gate, you're off your game. Now I got you. I'm coming in and I'm taking you out. It's over with. Just like that. That's so how I do it. You go in for the no. This is, this is awesome. You go in for the no. Hey, listen. And now you kind of hold the frame. So you hold the frame now with the no. You already got them uncomfortable. You realize that they're scared as shit. Okay? Yes. Yeah, that's the main thing. And I think that um, that's very important just to know that people are even more afraid than you are, you know, and, and going into this thing. So just hold your confidence. Hey, Jamie, I got some people in here. They're going to ask a couple questions. I want to give you definitely a question from the audience. 
But um, effective negotiations, and you kind of built your strength off of going in for the no. But realizing that you have to shut your mouth and open your ears. Tell me about that part. Amen. The more I listen, see, when I assume I'm always wrong, I am always wrong because I am not the smartest guy in the room, never will be. Don't plan on being, don't have to be. But I listen. If I ask you a question, I'm not going to say a damn word until you finish answering the question. Number one, talk about being uncomfortable. When there's silence, silence is uncomfortable. I got comfortable with silence. I love silence. We can sit here and look at each other for the next two hours. I'll win. You'll hang up on me before we're done. But I will get exactly what I want from you. I guarantee it every single time. So I listen because I don't know the answer to the question. And the minute that I become quiet, and I open my ears, and I open my mind, and I'm intent on what they're saying, they become focused on what they're saying. Mm. When they become focused on what they're saying, and they know that I'm listening, I position them in a place to where they feel like they are in charge. And when that happens, Tyler is winning every single time. I love, I love your approach. I think this is amazing. I have no doubt in my mind that you are going to achieve you are going to achieve so much more now and in the future. And what I love, the fact that it took you 42 years, right? You're, you know, there's a lot of 20-something years old that's like, man, I got to be at a certain age or I got to wait or maybe, listen, we're starting, I started this company at 35 years old. That's not what I had in mind when I was 13 years old heading off to college. I thought at 23, it was going to be the white picket fence. I was going to follow the American dream like my family. At 35 years old, I'm still in the game, starting fresh and ready to go. What do you have to say with people that are, uh, that are 40, they're still young, 50s, and they feel like, man, my time is done, man. I'll leave it for the young boys. Wrong. See, the young boys, they want the, Lam- they want the Lamborghini, right? They yeah. just got their damn driver's licenses. They're not authorized to drive a Lamborghini. Park the Lamborghini. Leave it at the dealership for the chumps. Mm. Okay? That stuff is for the chumps or mm. the people that can really afford it. You need to build generational wealth. You know what? You want to impress me? Exist without a job and without government assistance. I don't care about your damn Lamborghini. If you got nothing to back it up, okay? If you think you're past your prime, you're right. You are. You are past your prime. So step out of my way because I'm coming through. That needs to be your mindset. Mm. If you let that be how you react, then that's exactly how things are going to be. You do set your own destiny. If you're going to blow it, you're damn right you're going to blow it. You're absolutely going to blow it. So just decide not to. It's that simple. And you see, what I love is the fact that you started really legitimately two years ago, right? And all of this took place two years ago. Time doesn't even matter. Bro, you could be 50 years old and in a year, two years, begin that real concrete process of generational wealth, begin that success path, begin that mindset switch. You know, I started this company in a year, took off like this. It doesn't, time doesn't even exist anymore. The difference between me and them though is that I'm patient as hell. Okay, because I've been patient for 34 years, didn't do anything with my life, already put it all the way in the garbage can, addicted to everything in the book, right? And I spent that, I just changed it. And I took responsibility for my life. So I love what you said, the time is now making a decision and moving forward with that. What about people that's like, yo, the passion versus the money. I always love asking that question. Do you follow the passion? Do you follow the money, Tyler? Let me know. It's the passion. Here's the thing. I've been in the real estate game for 18 years, 16 of which doing it wrong. Mm. Because there was no passion. I don't give a rat's ass about selling a house. I don't. But people give me money to sell them houses. So, you know, there are times when I will sell a house if the price is right, yeah. but I don't have to sell a house. So it's the passion. It's about working with the people. I handpick the buyers that I work with. I handpick the students that I take on and mentor because that's why you don't see me advertising any, any of my coaching stuff because I don't coach the masses. I coach people that I know are coachable, period. I don't have a course for you to buy that's going to make you a million dollars because I don't, I think that's crap because it starts in here. Right. Okay. So, you know, you just got to realize that if you're not going to do anything, if you're just going to keep the same mindset over and over and over again, if you can't change this, you're done. Everything is up here. Yeah. 
absolutely. It's, it starts with that mindset switch and that decision. First, you have to believe it, man. And you're, you just spoke, you just spoke this to our audience. Our audience loves it so much. And I know you've provided so much value, especially with that negotiation piece. They could take that and run to the damn bank. Okay. Yes. Uh, you, Tyler chef, anything that else you want to say to our comfort killers before we get the hell out of here and get to work? I want to ask them what they are going to do after this, after you hit stop, what are they going to do to change the situation they're in now? What are they going to do to make a damn difference, to not be a liability in society, to be a damn asset? Mm. What are you going to do to be an asset? Because we got lots of liabilities in society. We don't need any more of those. We got that down pat. <laughs> and it starts with the federal government. I don't even get into politics. It don't matter about politics. It's just about the government as a whole. Yeah. I don't care. But what are you going to do to be an asset versus a liability? Mm. You know, let me tell you a quick story. No one knows about this. Um, when I was in nursing school, and I don't even know, I didn't, I didn't finish it. It wasn't my passion, right? We spoke about passion. And someone sent me a, I was fired from the job. And someone sent me an email. Okay, this is the first that time I ever told someone. And they said, Stacy, you lazy B, okay, I see you outside. I'm tired of, I'm, I'm, I see you outside not doing anything with your life. You're a waste of space. And also, um, we're paying taxes for your unemployment, and I hate it. Get up off your, and, I, and God knows, I don't know who sent that mail to this day. But it struck something inside of me, especially when you're talking about why don't you stop being a liability even up to yourself and become an asset. And I love that you, there's a call to action here for comfort killers. Stop just listening, like stop just being a mere freaking paint on the wall. Take some action, especially when you have information and, and Tyler here is telling you that he just straight up called. He's not supposed to afford it. He don't have the money in the bank. He's making the calls every day. What is it going to take? It requires action. It requires you being uncomfortable. But on the most side of it, it requires changing your mindset and making a decision. That right there is action. Tyler, I don't know who sent me that mail. I hope it wasn't you, man. It may have been. You never know. <laughs> I don't like when people stand still. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right, man. It's been such a blessing here to spend my morning with you. I learned so much. I took notes on it. I take notes on everyone. And, and you got a full page in here. Some things that I've learned that I'm going to implement, put in my negotiation standards, go for the no. And I love that. Your website is cashflowguys.com. Guys, Comfort Killers, please jump online. Check out Tyler's podcast. You love his voice. I love it. Check it out and get some goddamn knowledge. And But still, it's not just about the knowledge, baby. It's about the action. What are you going to do to step outside of yeah. your comfort zone today? Ladies yes. and gentlemen, I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. And I want to send a big shout out to Jill. Travel the world, do your thing, and I love you guys. Um, hey, any, any last words, any last quotes before I sign out of here, Mr. Tyler? What are you waiting for, people? Let's do it.